All right, awesome. Ethan, what's up, man? How are you? Good to see you. I'm great. Good to see you. Thanks for coming to meet me, man. I came all the way from California to spend some time with you at the um, Clerks Comic Book Guys uh, <laughs> podcast space in uh, Red Bank, New Jersey. What um, What's new, man? <sighs> Lots new. Can we talk about, uh, can we talk like real estate, 70% life. real estate and like 10% surfing and 20% Bitcoin or <laughs> that, that cool? that, that's a pretty good range of what, what's going on right I'd now. Like to, yeah. 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 That, is that cool, man? No, we can talk about whatever you want to talk about. Um, yeah. Just tell us what's new, man. Yeah. I've been, there's oh, a lot's new, um, in terms of real estate, I've just been primarily focused on increasing my production and increasing, uh, you know, my ability to serve clients and give them the best experience possible buying or selling real estate. And then outside of that, I've just been working uh, a lot towards of just building my own foundation, self-development, being healthy, staying in good shape, good mental attitude. And then outside of that, now that crypto is back, I'm very into the, uh, I've always, I've always been into just developing, you know, financial freedom and independence and I think the technology goes along with that narrative that I that I'm very into. So I'm I'm pretty passionate about that. And then outside of that, I'm 21, so my life can go in many directions. I'm curious on what doors are going to open this year. And you know, for the most part, I've just the the winter is kind of that time period where there's a lot of time to myself, a lot of time. Um, you know, business tends to be slower. Life tends there's tends to be less distractions going on. You know, all my friends are in college, so they're all out of town. So it's the last couple of months have been very dialed in and focused on building myself up. So then I'm prepared for, you know, when doors start to open, I'm, I'm ready. Because people say, I forget who said the quote, but it's uh, success happens when preparation meets an opportunity. Mm-hmm. And I've just been preparing, preparing, preparing and seeing what opportunities come. Dude, that's a rad. You just said a lot of cool stuff, man. What? Um, so 21, I probably... I'd still be sleeping or waking up in a garbage can, maybe, uh, or on someone's <laughs> on someone. Some days I so, still some days that still happens to me. You'd be surprised. So at twenty one, I would be waking up on the wrong person's front porch in Ocean Grove, New Jersey. That's where I would be. So at twenty one, man, uh, you were talking like me, a forty four year old. Um, uh, what? How'd you get here, man? Like, how did this happen? Because uh, most twenty ones are. You made, you made it happen. Oh, uh, <laughs> so, all right. Cool. I got Let, in your let's circle. Di- let's dive in, man. So, like, yeah, how did you... Let's talk about real estate, man. So, you got into real estate. I I kind of know your story, but you kind of have a really rad story. Can you share it with us on how you, like... Like, really, it was like... Well, go ahead, man. How did you get into real estate? It, uh, it why was... Why did you listen to Gil? Yeah. Why did I listen to Gil? Dude's crazy. Yeah, he's crazy smart. And crazy smart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's one of those dudes, like, he's, like, on my board of directors, dude. Like, I don't, like I go to that dude, like, I don't make decisions without talking to Gil. And it's, um, if you have somebody like Gil in your life, man, I think you, you have a major, you have, like, a major advantage like, over most people, right? I find that if I don't go to Gil first and I make a decision, it tends to be a mistake. <laughs> yeah. You know, man, so on, that's on our team. That's on, what happens, well, and I've on, made those before. Bro, I was talking about this. So on our team, we have a mentality of, like, two heads are better than one, right? And what that really stems from is, uh, I was talking about this yesterday, man, like, people want to figure things out on their own, and that's a sign of ego, right? Ego's the enemy, and if people, if you can't get humble and ask for help, like, why would you not want some assistance in making some decisions, you know? Like, some people have different experiences, different perspectives. So, yeah, Gil's great for that. So, yeah, how did you wind up selling real estate at 19? Is that correct? Uh, I started when I was 18, technically. 18, okay. I my license, yeah, I was 18. I was probably just turning 19. It was going into that winter, so yeah, I was probably turning 19. And how, how did I get into it? Well, I've always, I've always just personally, like one of my goals of mine has always just been achieve an independence as soon as possible. You know, separate myself from my parents, grow up, become financially independent, figure out everything. Just be, just be able to live on my own, make my own decisions, and live freely and you know the biggest thing that holds people back is you know financial stability right you know they're they're handcuffed to a location or a job because they have to pay off certain debts etc and real estate was really the the number one option 
just based on data that 90% of millionaires build wealth through real estate, this is something that I, sh- I should at least learn and know and understand if I want to accomplish that goal of becoming independent on my own. So that was kind of like the, the that was the, the lead driver that brought me, you know, made me interested in the space in the first place. So then it was just a combination of, you know, the relationships that I had through working at Summertime Surf Camp and then Gil ranting about the real estate team that he started with you over Mexican on a Friday afternoon. Because every Friday afternoon, we take all of our tip money and we and we go out and get some Mexican and beers. Hell yeah. And uh, Gil showed up one day, started ranting about real estate. I was like, hey, let me talk to you about that real quick. And before you know it, I, I was dropping a four-ride opportunity and started working with you and you and him. What was, there was something, there was another path that you were on. And it yeah. didn't go that way. Is that correct? Can you tell me about that? So the other path I was on, I was just graduating high school. I was swimming competitively. Um, and I uh, I applied to the United States Coast Guard Academy. I got my, I received my commitment letter, which I had a guaranteed spot. Um, Congratulations. Thank you. It was awesome. I was very excited. And, you know, that was a whole different path my life could have taken. And I'm sure my life would have, you know, been very exciting if I had. Uh and what it was is it's a nine-year commitment. So you go to school for four years, and then you serve as an officer in the Coast Guard for an additional five. And going into it, you do a program called Swab Summer. I believe it's a seven-week program. So that summer, you're you're at Swab Summer, where it's pretty much um, Coast Guard boot camp right. before you start your four, four years of school. And pre just before I uh, I went into Swab Summer, I broke my wrist. Uh, and I was deferred a year. So I had a guaranteed spot at the academy. However, it wasn't until the following year. And because of that dynamic shift in my life, I, I had you know this 12-month period where the only thing I was required to do was take three classes at Ocean County College. And that was that's a breeze for me. Yeah. You know, three, three classes is not a lot yeah. <laughs> for a whole year. Correct. And uh, at that same period of time, I ended up you know, crash coursing with Gil over Mexican about the real estate team. And I looked into that, and then I just like uh, looked at my two options, and I was just like, "Fuck it, I'm take a risk. I'm gonna do this." That's awesome, man. And uh, and that that brought me to where I am now. What do you love about real estate? What do I love about it? I love working with people, just working with great people. Yeah, I mean that's that's like one of my number one priorities is just doing business and working with great people, and you know real estate brings out the 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 good and the bad in people you see both because it it give me an example of either oh gosh oh gosh (laughs) you see some really good in people but you also see some really really bad um well it's highly emotional right highly emotional and the decisions that that people make throughout the transactional process totally impacts is the other party Mm -hmm. and it's a it you know our job is to pretty much keep it is it's almost like to monitor the emotions so that both people have a very smooth transition in their relocation yeah and there's there's so many you know it it all comes down to like i I guess people's incentives and you know the life life can freaking hit you like a brick wall yeah you know shit happens in people's lives and uh, you know, whatever happens in parties A's life will impact the deal and then now impact parties B's life and then you're you're in you're the person in the middle. Yeah, managing those expectations is super hard, right? And so I think in real estate it's so difficult for the consumer because there's so much that happens behind the scenes. Yeah. That like only you see, right? Mm-hmm. Like you're managing something, you're fixing something, you're like putting out fires before they happen. Yeah. Um, what things do you what do you hate what do you hate about real estate? What do I hate about real estate? Um, the the one thing I hate about real estate, yeah, yeah, uh, there's some things. The one thing I hate about real estate, I'm gonna be honest, realtors. even though real <laughs> tour, <laughs> yes, realtors, commission splits. Um, there's a lot. There's definitely some things to not like about real estate. I would say when when it comes down to it, you're growing your own independent practice, your independent business, and the the one part I love about it is working with great people the one part i hate about it is working with not so great people and sometimes you have to well you always have to you always that's the problem right you you can't control so how many people are involved in every transaction home inspector attorney mortgage lender the other realtor buyer seller 
title buyer's company. Buyer's mom, buyer's dad. Contractors, plumbers. The neighbor who's neighbors. throwing whatever, throwing oh, trash at you during a home Dude, I'll tell you a story. I, I parked I just, I just, parked across the street, and the neighbor came out and yelled at me. And, my, <laughs> and then my people didn't want to buy the house because of it. Oh, I remember mean, that. Which totally makes sense. I'm like, good thing they came out yeah. and said some not you live very next nice to a crazy things. person. Because now yeah, we know correct. that you're going to be living next to a crazy person, uh, and I, I I know you don't want that. A hundred percent, man. But a hundred percent. No, um, there's crazy people out there. So what do we love about it? People. What do we hate about it? People. Yeah, that's my conclusion. No, it's hard. I remember thinking like, <laughs> yeah, I remember thinking like, if I could clone myself, however, like, and I could do every part of the transaction, that would be awesome. But that's just like not, <laughs> it's just oh. not possible. <laughs> no, it's not. Okay, so let me ask you this, dude. So you're unique, man. We we have a real estate team, right? We run our team kind of like the teamerage model. It's really like a brokerage um, where we try to support you as much as we can. You were here when we started, which was like 2019, 2020, right? Somewhere around there, 20, whatever, right there. You came on, um, brand new agent, did well, like right away. Yeah, I was in production in five months. Yeah, you did well right away, man. And so, and then you kind of were like, "This is cool, thanks." I'm gonna go do some, do it on my own. And now you're back with the team. Can you talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. So initially, by the way, I'm so psyched that you're that you're back, man. Me like, too. I just love working with you, and you have so much energy, and it's uh, it's it's, it's awesome, man. Yeah, I'm glad to be back. I uh, yeah, initially, I mean, when we started, it was you, Sam Marks, Gil, Gil Olson, me, a couple other people that I can't really remember. <laughs> um, and this was before we even really were partnered with Zillow and when we were just hitting was there the dialing. Ad- was there a different admin? Or was Lauren there? No, uh, Lauren, Lauren and Nor. Oh, that's right. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Lauren, yeah, yeah. Lauren, Lauren was there when I started. Correct. Yeah, there was no Gil- leads. It's like, go find leads, right? There was yeah. no leads. We weren't working with Zillow. There were no leads. It was all cold prospecting. Right. It was you would sit down with me on the dialer and we'd dial for two hours and then you, I would just listen and then I'd take everything that I listened to and then I'd do it on my own. And that's kind of like how I, I didn't, I didn't even generate business doing that, but I was able to take all that information and then I was able to fold that into the Zillow program. And then yeah. I went right when we started getting Zillow connections, that's when I got into production. And then I ended up able to generate my own business cold calling, which is a lot more money friendly. Correct. <laughs> and then I was like, all right, I'm, you know, it, I had four deals. I'm doing all this work. And the one deal that I generated was, you know, making me just as much as the additional three. So then I decided to like veer off on my own and try to figure it out, which was great for me because it allowed me to like separate myself and kind of just like figure out branding and and what kind of, I guess, brand I want for my own real estate business. Mm -hmm. And then over time I was like, well, I'm doing all this additional work. And then I I, I really just sat down with Gil and he's like, what are you trying to build now that you're on your own? And, you know, what would your life look like if you rejoined the team? And what would your life look like if you were to try to build what you're currently trying to build? And I sat down with him over some coffee and I went over everything I was trying to build. I was like, well, eventually I'm going to hire, you know, this, like a transaction coordinator, direction of operations, and I'm going to have people managing and I'm just going to put build and push my brand out to generate my own leads using my hindsight realty brand. And then I'm going to, you know, build this team infrastructure. And he's like, why would you spend all this time money and energy and overhead building exactly what we've spent the last five years building out for you to utilize. Why don't you just rejoin? You instantly have everything that you're trying to build and then push your brand out as if, as you already originally planned. And my, all of my over, overhead just disappeared. My monthly cost just went down like 1500 bucks a month. And then I'm back on the team and I have all this leverage. I've, I have Chris, I have you, I have Joe, I have, all these resources, I, I, I've Lauren, I have all this leverage to, to do things. You know, I can't be at two places at once. Like right, the other yeah. weekend, I had two other open houses going on. I had an open house Saturday and two on Sunday. It's like, I can't manage that on my own. Because there's not, there's only one Ethan. There's only one Ethan. <clears throat> yeah. But on the team, you know, there's all this leverage and people, everyone there is there to help each other. Other agents from the team were sitting your open houses for you. Exactly. While you were, you're at one, they're at another one. and. Yeah, the client is psyched, right? Yeah, and and I'm able to provide a much better service and experience for my clients simply by leveraging the what you and Gil have built out for for you know real estate agents to be successful in the business. So I, you know, I was able. It almost leaving almost helped me understand where I could utilize the real estate team to help me grow and scale my business. I think that's ultimately what it did. Yeah, man. What do we want? We want time and money. 
We want one, or, we want one or other or both of them, right? And so basically, with the leverage, it gives you your time back. It gives you you're either sacri- money. you're either sacrificing time for money or you're sacrificing money to buy your time back. Yeah, correct. That's, That's how awesome. I see it. Hundred percent, man. And it was at the point where it's like, I'm just gonna have to sacrifice a percent of my commission to get all this time back, which is which is was became a no brainer eventually. Perfect. Awesome. Thanks, man. What um. Tell me about your brand, dude. I love that. Okay. That was one thing about you early on. You're like, dude, I'm going to start my own brand. I was like, all right, cool. That's great. Yeah, let's get you out there. That's what we want, right? We want to empower you. So tell us about H- Hindsight Realty, dude. Hindsight Realty. Uh, and what does it mean to you, man? Tell me about your brand. And I saw your yard signs, man. Everything looks awesome. I love the colors. Yeah, I. the branding's interesting. I mean, I, I've, I've been trying to stem it. I've been trying to figure it out because it's all, it's all a work in progress. Um the personal branding is kind of where it stemmed from where it's like tying it into real estate at least the personal brand i i document my my instagram is all based on documenting my success story and i've just been every single thing that i'm doing i'm just documenting it on video and then i'm putting some of it out there and at least with tying my personal brand into the 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 real estate brand of hindsight realty i'm just taking me who i am the lifestyle i live i grew up on the jersey shore i've lived here all of my life i want to i know the neighborhood the school district i'm very well uh it's you know i i have relationships in the in the neighborhood i i just i push my lifestyle out there the things i like to do the hobbies that i'm into um and by kind of like cultivating this awesome lifestyle of I, I live here on the Jersey Shore, this is what my life looks like. If you want your life to look like my life, you can buy a home here, raise a family, and, and live the lifestyle that I've created for myself. And That's I'm awesome. kind of just by pushing out the lifestyle that I live, it's kind of just creating a picture for people to you know, envision a lifestyle that, that they could live for themselves and their own family. And then the Hindsight Realty brand is you know, the, the place to go to accomplish that goal. Hell yeah, dude. Anyway. That sounds awesome. That's like, I guess. Is that rehearsed or is that, that's your elevator pitch. This is all cool. This is Bro, all, that's this your is elevator. Just, this is just me talking. <laughs> that's your elevator pitch right there, man. That's awesome. Dude, I want to be a, a, a Point Pleasant Beach ripper, dude. Like hang yeah. out on the boardwalk and. Come hang out with me. Have a beer. Let's go <laughs> surfing and buy a house. Dude, that's awesome. All right, cool. Well, we're developing your brand further right now. That's ma- that's awesome. And, th- and this is the other, this is the other part I love about real estate is this. This yeah. is fun. This I love right? I love talking. I love just this. The podcasting's sure. been fun. Yeah, I was listening to Rogan and he was like, someone's talking about podcasting and he's like, dude, I never listen to podcasts. Like I just don't do it, right? And so um he's just like he said something like someone's like, How are you so successful or something? He's like, I just like talking to people that I like talking to. He's like, I just want to talk to interesting people. And that makes sense, man. So especially in a world right now, man, where it's like Fuck, man, I don't ever talk to you, man. Like, you know what I mean? Every once in a while, and it's like now we get to sit down and like bullshit and we carve out some time. Yeah. Um, it's every once in a while. Every time, it's always better. Yo, what's your five year goal? Do you have one? My five year goal? Fuck. <laughs> in real estate or like or just in general, man? Like, it doesn't. Um, so we live in this world right now, man, where we could be doing anything in a month and six months and a year. Everything's constantly changing. I think everything's a moving target, right? Um, and yeah, man, have you thought about it? Yeah, it, it, there's, it's just so I, I have so much uncertainty of where my life's going to be in six months from now. Predicting where I'm going to be in five years is just really freaking hard. Um, I would say with my real estate business, um, I have a couple of agents under me or I guess working with me Mm -hmm. and I'm in production. Um, Shit, I don't know. I don't know. There's so much uncertainty. Well, you talk a lot about being like, independent and building wealth, right? Yeah. I And so what I when I ask you what do you love about real estate, I think the real answer is you love that you have an opportunity to build wealth, correct? Yeah. Right? And so what does that look like to you, man? Like what does building wealth look like to you? That's important to you, correct? I don't know. What's I, that? I can't oh, hear you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh sorry. I, can't I was leaning away. Mic. Yeah. That's why you got that. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Thank you. Um yeah, what does building wealth look like to you? Or or when are you um do I have permission to ask you the real the real yeah. shit, right? Yeah. So like when are you independent, man? Like what does independent mean, man? Independent could be like, oh, I got an apartment. You know, independent could be like, oh, I own ten properties that are free and clear that pay me a minimum of three thousand dollars a month. I need three hundred I need three hundred thousand dollars a year to live on. Like, what does it look like to you to be like independently wealthy? 
I'm actually so happy you asked this question because I'm at this really weird turning point in my life, which is why when when you ask that, like, what? what, (laughs) I'm always there, by the way. (laughs) Like, when you you ask, like, where is my life going to be in five years? I can't even answer that question because there's so much uncertainty. And the reason why I say that is because the last three years, I've just put my head down and worked in real estate to get to where I am now. And where I'm in now is I'm this in this position where I'm gonna be honest, like I've I've hit the point where I'm completely financially independent. Yeah, I can live wherever I want. Mm-hmm. I can work with whomever I Congratulations. want. Congratulations! It's thank you, but it's almost a scary place to be in because I've spent the last three years with my head down working, having this goal to get to where I am now, and now that I'm here. I'm like, everything I worked for has been accomplished. What's next? Dude, I'm in the same spot. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what's next? Do I just scale and sell more houses and make more money? Like, I, I, I know I'm really good at what I do, and I could just scale and make more money and do more business. But that's not what's going to make you happy. But that's not, like, I, I don't find purpose in that anymore. Like, the whole purpose of getting into real estate was to become financially independent. Now that I am financially independent, it's like, what's the purpose of my work now? And that's what I'm trying to figure out. Dude, can I share something with you? Yeah. So, like, I'm kind of in the same spot. I, like, to be honest, man, like, when I started doing real estate, man, I was, like, I came from massive scarcity, you know, didn't have any money. Actually, like, I lost my first house, right? Like, short sold my first house. Like, I remember I remember you told me that story. Yeah, I, like, dude, I got up in the morning and, like, I think most people wake up in the morning and, like, it's all like sunshine and roses and whatever. But like, I wake up with like fear, man, you know, like especially when you're in scarcity. And so I got into like, I just started like crushing real estate because I was like, dude, I need to make money. I need to make money. I need to make money. Cause we were always like, my family was like, my parents had me when they were 19 and they did their best. It was cool. We had, we were, I used to say we were poor, but then I got into real estate and I saw like multi families that were in four. I saw like real poor people and I was like, okay. I, I had food. We're cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm we're like, cool. we were okay in Brick, New Jersey. We were fine. We just didn't, maybe we didn't go to Disneyland. Maybe we didn't have Jordans, but we were fine. And so my motivation was like, oh man, I, I was scarcity and fear, right? To build, to, to earn money. And now it's like, I'm in a point in my life where like I have, I've, earned, I've, I've gotten all the things that I wanted. You know, if you would have asked me like five years ago or 10 years ago, like, hey, write down everything you want. If I would have done that, I would have shortchanged myself. You know, like I've gotten more than that. And now I'm like, dude, I have like nothing to chase. It's kind of weird. Right. And so, um, I, and I, I sat down and was thinking to myself, like, what's really hap- What's really important to me. And my goal was to be, dude, my goal in real estate was to be geographically free, like to move around, man. Like I just worked in Hawaii for, you see me, dude, I'm all over the place. I was yeah. in Hawaii working for 10 days. Then I live in, I live in California. I run a team in New Jersey. I help agents all over the country. And it's been, you know, I'll pick up and I sold a couple of houses last year in Orange County, you know, like I'll, I'll pick up and do some stuff. So being financial, being geographically free was, was more, was, was really important to me. And I've achieved that. And now it's like, what's next, you know? And it's a, it's a weird spot to be in. Um, and for me, man, I'm super passionate about, building up other people, spotlighting really cool people that are doing cool stuff and empowering them and just like sharing our stories. You know, I think like, uh, like the butterfly effect, like you don't, whatever your story can help people and you don't even really know like the ripple effect. That's important to me. But, um, yeah, I think what you're saying is, it's just, it's time to like, are you reflecting on this? Are you reflecting on what, what's next for you? A lot. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I think about most of the day. Yeah. It's like, what, what, what am I doing? What do I want to do? I actually wrote down, this was like a couple weeks ago, was uh, we were doing what, uh, New Year's resolutions. We didn't do them this year. We forgot to. Right. And all, my brother just got a job. This is your family? Yeah, this is my family. So we're all home. And my mom was like, all right, we, gotta, we didn't do resolutions. Let's do them. And I wrote, Ethan Hines is going global. <laughs> <laughs> so Very that, broad. That, pretty broad. Pretty broad. Yeah. So I, I don't know. Um, but I, I just hit the point where it's like, I own my Bitcoin, I live off of my credit cards, and I'm totally geographically free, personally free. I could, it, it, it's, it's, I don't know what to do with it. Okay. But it's like, right now, it's just help the people that are in my life and that come to me asking for help. Like, I, I, I just want to, like, to do that. That's all I know. That's good, man. And then. Well, you've accomplished yeah. a lot very early in your life, dude. You're just, dude, you have so much more to do. That's pretty rad. Yeah, it's very it's it's very exciting. I, I like to say right now is just like the quiet before the storm. Hell yeah, that's what I've been telling myself because I've just had a lot of time on my own at home to just think, a lot of thinking. 
That's good, man. And and a lot of doing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a lot of people don't do. A lot of people don't do that, man. I've they don't just reflect. They don't life think and reflect. Um, and that's why I picked up. I've been trying to find like a creative hobby, so I picked up jujitsu, which has been fun. Hell yeah! How long have you been doing that? Almost two months now. Do you love it? I'm starting to. Yeah. Dude, I'll I'll pass your guard if you want me to. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's um. Dude, my son. That my that's that's been, jujitsu. Was he really? You throw him in there, dude. Yeah. There's, dude, there's like one kid. My son's eight. There's one kid in there, right? He's got like a kind of mohawk mullet thing. Like he's been doing this for like a few years. Dude, he was like working my son, dude. I had to like, wa- I had to like watch. Like I'm sitting there and my son just getting war. Like you can see it in his face. <laughs> And a part of me is like, yeah, good. Like my son's, yeah. kind, my son kind of like. I'm talking about not going to Disneyland and not getting Air Jordans or whatever as a kid. My kid it, it goes to Disneyland and has Air Jordans. You know, I'm like, yo, I want him to feel a little bit of struggle, and he's getting worked. But then, like, I I could see him getting emotional in his face. But I know these are all lessons, and I was kind of yeah. getting emotional. I'm like, oh, my, I'm like, I couldn't watch. And I said to one of my buddies, whose kid is in there, I'm like, dude, I'm like, Milo got worked. He's like. He's like, that's life, baby. Sometimes you get worked, and sometimes you work somebody. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right, man. But you like it? Yeah, I, I, I need to get. I, I always need to get worked. <laughs> well, yeah, you and gotta, it's like it's for like some the, reason yeah. I feel like I'm not getting worked, so I threw myself into a new room that was very uncomfortable. And yeah, it's it's good. All right, I'm gonna shift gears, man. What? Um, okay, this is actually not that much shifting gears. You have a. Uh, Ethan Hines has like an entire, you have an entire free day to yourself. Nothing on your calendar. You do whatever you want. What are you doing? That's kind of like every day. (laughs) (laughs) I know. I I wake up some days and I don't have anything on my calendar other than make sure my clients are happy and then it's what do I want to do today? That is my every day. And I I stem it based around, you know, I, 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 my, I just like, how I kind of organize my time is I just have like a I just have like a list of priorities and throughout the day it, it always changes. Like I could get one text message and it could, you know, be something happened with one of my current transactions. That's now priority number one is solving that problem, make sure that client's happy. Mm-hmm. Once that problem is solved, client's happy, next priority. Um, and those priorities could be even just small things. Like in, in the morning if it's night, like if say it's a beautiful day out, I have absolutely nothing on my calendar. I'm waking up early. I'm going for a walk. I have my morning coffee. I'm, you know, just going through my messages, and then I, you know, I find things to do with people. Nice. And that's that's really it. I just find things I want to do with people that I enjoy doing things with. And so, then other than that, it's productive work, making sure clients are happy, and, you know, if if I if I want to make some money, I'll do some prospecting. That's rad, man. That's really it. So you've gotten to the point where your real estate business, your crypto, that's gotten you to a point where like you really can kind of just do whatever you want. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah, it happened over That's kind of sick, dude. It's pretty awesome, but it's ter- fucking terrifying at the same time. Why? Because my whole life I've been forced to do work for a certain reason, and now I'm not. So it's like, you know, you go to school, it's like you have to take this, you have to do your homework to get good grades. You have to take this test to get good grades. You have to do this to get a degree, to graduate, to get into college. And then I got into college and then I didn't go to college. And then I was like, well, I need to sell houses because I need to move out. I need to move out. I need to figure out where I'm going to live. I got to pay my car payments, rent and health insurance, dental. I got to figure all this out. And I managed to do that in like two, three years. And nice. now I'm 21, and I'm like, what's next? I don't have any. It's almost like I don't have any more of my own problems to solve. And now it's kind of like I'm almost looking I'm almost looking for problems in other people's lives to solve to make me happy. Wow. <laughs> if that's, well, like, that's where I'm at, and I don't know. I think the highest form yeah. of living is helping others. It just feels good to help other people, yeah. right? Especially if you've gotten so far so early. Back to the beginning of your real estate career, you had mentioned you came in and you were taking Zillow leads, and that's you said that's what kind of got you, that's what got you like your footing beneath you. You got a bunch really quickly, closed them out, and then you were like, then you moved on to like, and you saw like, hey, this is cool. I understand the business, 
And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and do some more. So you're super smart. You're like, I'm going to go do some more profitable stuff. The more profitable stuff, like if I take a connection from Zillow, I got to pay Zillow, right? But if I go out and find something on my own, hunter gatherer, I'm going to make more money. And then that's what you did. And that's when you started prospecting. That's when your ROI went up and that kind of like accelerated things. Is that right? Yeah. A combination of the prospecting, which allowed me the, the prospecting and Working the leads from Zillow was like my real estate school experience. Where yeah. It's like this is this is I've I've learned the entire the entire pipeline of, you know, submitting an offer, going on a contract, close, etc. And then I learned the entire transactional process, which I, I got everything I needed from that. And then I took that on with the combination of, you know, the cold prospecting, which just increased my conversion. And then throughout just posting on social media and the personal branding, I've built a big enough brand. I've built the sa- the sales experience that I need yeah. to to work those people if you know if I get inquiries through the brand, and now I've kind of just like built a self sustained business off of my own personal branding and marketing, and then the, you know the the sales experience and the credibility that I've built it just I'm just in business now. So you came in and you leveraged the team leads really quickly. That gave you momentum. You got money right, so you're able to stay in real estate. And once yep. you're getting paid, you're like, oh cool, I'm gonna keep doing this. And then you found your place. That's what I love about you, man. Um, Because let's say like Zillow leads, that should be like a stepping stone. That should not be your business, right? That should be something that gets you to the next level. Um, One thing, tell me if this is true. I remember when you and I were working together, when I was coaching you, we were, uh, when I was your sales manager, whatever, right? Is this true? This is how I remember this. I believe that you took a Zillow lead and you like, it was a buyer. You found that person a house in, I, know this story. And I think it was like Wall Township or Ocean Township. And you, I could totally get the story wrong, by the way. This is, um, th- it sounds really good in my head, but I'm trying to confirm if this is what happened. So basically you had a, you had a buyer, you had a, took a Zillow lead, buyer, found them a house, got them under contract. You're at the home inspection and the sellers who are working with another realtor, not us, not you, not us, not Oz Group, not EXP, not, not Hindsight, not Ethan, they like they met you and they were like, "Wow, you're so professional, um, Ethan. You're the man. You're such a ripping surfer, crypto sexy dude. Um, we our daughter has to sell their house. Would you speak to her about selling her house? Close, close. Is that a little different? What that you're not sexy or is that part, <laughs> is that part accurate at least? We, we could keep that one in there. Uh, uh, yeah, so this is what, <laughs> this is Yo, what you happened. basically were hijacking people's clients, right? Because you're so good, right? Is that what happened? Pretty much. Okay. Tell well, me what, this is, so tell that me was, what really that was happened. actually, that buyer was my first ever, my first ever appointment, my first ever Zillow connection. Your first Zillow connection, you converted? Yeah. That's right. And I showed up to the door and I couldn't figure out, I met her there thinking that she was the listing agent. And met- I was like, oh my God, there's this really cool yeah. program where, you know, we're working with Zillow. They bring us buyers. It's really awesome. She's the freaking buyer. I didn't even know. <laughs> And so she you're was talking like, to her like she, I, she's another realtor. Yeah, and then and then I couldn't open up the lockbox. I, I didn't know I didn't know how to use the super lockboxes yet. This was the first time I've ever. Yeah. I didn't even know what a lockbox was to be quite honest. So I'm like trying to scan the fucking thing, and I'm like, go go check out the backyard. She takes five minutes. I figure it out. We get it fixed. We go in. Whatever. Was that, is that the most frightening? Oh, my heart was moment. Racing. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. But you know, that's why I, that's why I always remember the experience. Mm-hmm. And so, well, over the course of five months, um, she bought that house in Wall, which is the house that you're talking about. Mm-hmm. So we went on a contract. It was a really cool house. Like the whole property was had these twenty foot concrete walls around the whole place because it used to be like a like run by the cartel. Really? It had yeah, it had tunnels that were. I thought you were gonna say like nudist colony. No. <laughs> No, well, it had, like, in the basement, or there wasn't a basement, but, like, in the downstairs area, there's like, these, there was this door, and it was, like, a tunnel that they filled up because they had this tunnel system with all the neighboring properties, and they had these giant concrete walls. Really? Like, like yeah, drug cartel? Tall. Yeah, it used Whoa. to be. I'm pretty sure. Hell yeah. I don't know. I don't know the actual story, but that's besides All right, cool. But back. Yeah. Yeah, some maybe. Right. I don't know. I don't know. But back to the. Yeah, the we're not narking point. on anyone. <laughs> So she, it's really awesome property. She buys a house. We're on a contract. We have the home inspection. I go to the home inspection. My buyer clients there. The sellers are there as well. Uh, I just end up talking to the sellers for you know two the two hours two three hours were there. They ended up really liking me. So they referred me to a, a family friend, who of which had their property listed with his own daughter. That's what it was. That's it. Okay. Yeah. And he he had the property list with his own daughter. She overpriced it like four hundred thousand dollars. They were asking one point two million. It was, yeah. It was an eight hundred seven hundred fifty thousand dollar house. 
it sat on the market for three months, and he was really sick living on his own. He had to, he had to get out. Yeah, he was in a really bad spot, and he was also he you know he just it it you know he he was getting older, and it was really hard for him to like process everything like i had to sit down with him for hours did you get that listing i did get the list you sell that house so what yeah so what ended up happening was he Sick. he he signed a termination agreement with his own daughter and fired his own daughter and then hired me an 18 year old realtor to sell his house and we sold this house in like two three months dude that's so sick yeah so the Crazy. cool part is is like dude the thing about you is you're just willing to try new shit man like you're you say yes more than you say no you're like willing to try th new things you're willing to fail forward right like everything you've done well you've done wrong first correct like you can't even open up a lockbox right and then you're like boom and then look what happens and so they i love that those people had their house listed with another realtor they didn't refer that realtor to their friend they referred you and then that person had their house listed with their daughter yeah like, yeah i have to get like a professional it was funny, yeah. That was my first listing in my entire life. Dude, that's so awesome. And uh, and you're right. And by the way, like, that Zillow leads giving you more leads, by the way. That's like when you're out in the bit when you're out in the field just transacting, more more transactions happen. Yeah. And that's why that's where like real estate does become fun because you end up just working with real people. Like I have a summer rental right now and some guy and his team, it's ten people, he's a UFC fighter needs to rent the place for a month. It's like, that's that's kind of cool. That is pretty cool. You know? It's like, I got this guy, and I have a place, and he might be staying there, and he's got to train, and he's got his you know his whole team training him for a month for a fight in June. Like, I don't know. Just like those little little things where it's like you just meet new people because you're, you know, you're working in this, you're working in a space where your job is to work with people, which is what I like doing. That's awesome. So I love that. Good. I'd say the same, man. Over the course of my career, I've met some really, really rad people. Um, I just wish uh, more people came to me to ask for help. <laughs> they will, dude. <laughs> I don't want to be... Uh, the outbound prospecting is is the one thing I don't like. <laughs> yeah. Which is... It's great. Well, dude, once you have... For me, man... Can, but I keep leaning back from this microphone situation. So comfy. Yeah, totally. I'm just relaxing. Um, dude, I realized my phone started ringing around like year three or four when I had 30 transactions closed. Like my phone started ringing and people were like, hey, I got your number from Bob who you sold their house and blah, blah, blah. And it was like, hey, I, I know you're helping so-and-so buy a house this summer. Can you? So at around 30 transactions, I believe that that's, I had enough momentum, I had enough time in the market and I had enough past clients that would refer me and that's like kind of when my phone started ringing. Does that make sense? Yeah. I believe... Um, I believe that putting those – the fastest way to – and then it's just like compounding. You know what I mean? And it's like the fastest you can put 30 transactions together, the faster, the faster your business is going to start compounding compounding and building. Mm -hmm. What questions um, What questions should I have asked you that I didn't ask you? That's a hard question. <laughs> um, <clears throat> what do you, I don't know. What else do you want to know about my life? All right. I got, I got questions, dude. Keep them, keep them coming. All right. What was your first concert? If you think you're so cool, I don't know. <laughs> Are you a music guy? I, yeah, I, I, yeah. Um, not huge into music. Are you and Gil just lighting up spliffs and listening to 311 in the backyard, <laughs> or what? Like my early concerts oh. are, were quite a blur. <laughs> We'd go on the train, and then after that, I don't know what happened. What are you going to see? Fish in Madison Square Garden? Um, <laughs> what are you one of those people? <laughs> no, no, I haven't seen Fisher. <laughs> I think uh, I could be uh, I th dating it, it myself. I'm like twice your age. By it the was way. Dirty Heads. Okay, Dirty Heads. Still, still totally right. Dirty Heads. Stone okay. Pony. Okay. I was at that show. Yeah, dude, yeah. you guys were passing along something, probably yeah. right. I was like, what, 15 smoking yeah. joints for the first time? <laughs> dude, I think. I don't even know how I go. <laughs> That's funny. That train, baby. That train gets the train is back. fun. Well, the train ride back is not fun. Oh, yeah, the train yeah. ride there is great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're just going Bayhead to Asbury Park, right? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, when I was a kid, remember, I'm like twice your age, right? I played basketball in a brick. We would get on our bikes. We would just go anywhere and play basketball at like a park. I loved playing basketball. And then we would get on the train. We would ride our bikes to Point Pleasant, and then we would get on the train and go to, like, other... Dude, we thought we... We just saw... By the way, White Man Can't Jump had just come out, oh, yeah. so we, like, thought we were cool. We are like, gonna go, like, like crush, like, like basketball, like, play two-on-two two and crush basketball, like, basketball courts <laughs> or whatever. And then we went to Belmar, because the train stopped in Belmar. We played there. And then, dude, this has gotta be... 
I'm like 16 years old. So this guy be like 94, 95, something like that. And we go to Asbury. We get off at the train station there. 1994, 95. Oh, we walked like man. a half a block and we're like, oh, oh. this isn't for us. <laughs> this you know, isn't this our, little, this it was isn't a little scary spot, then. Yeah. Anybody that knows it was a little. Well, right. Asbury is, came, had a lot of up and coming sense, right? Correct. Yeah, it's come a long way, man. But um, all right, cool. So the train, if you could eat one food for the rest of your life, what would that be? Steak. Steak. Yeah. Or. I knew you were gonna go keto Guido with it. I don't know. I knew you. But the, the only thing about steak is like, I wouldn't want to get sick of it. I'd be scared of that because it's so because it's so good. All right, cool. We're here in um. Yo, what do you call this? Is this like the Clerks comic this, book they call podcast? It a shared universe. A shared universe. So yeah. we're. Shared but like it's run it's run by the um who runs this thing? We're looking at Ming. We're looking at the Ming. this guy right here next to Kevin. Okay, cool. Yeah. So this is Ming's spot, right? Yeah. Radical. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So I see there's big Lebowski stuff on the walls. There's like a ton there's clerk stuff. There's all uh, kinds of comic book man Yeah. Stuff. Uh Ethan, what's your favorite dude? What's the movie that you could like quote the whole movie, man? Or what what movie like it comes on on a Sunday, you're on the couch and you're gonna like stop and watch the whole thing? <laughs> oh gosh, I'm not very culturally culturally sound, I guess. <laughs> okay. I don't. Do you know? What, do you know what like, movies I, are? <laughs> yes, I know. You might. Did you might have? Listen, dude. Movies, you might have just but... had a lot more friends growing up, and so um, I just had. I had a TV, so you probably are better off, man. Like I, I watch a lot more YouTube. Like okay. I just watch. I just watch okay. a lot of things from people that are smarter than me. Okay, so talk but, to me about uh, that. What are we watching on YouTube? Like, what's your go-to YouTube channel? Is that what you say? I don't really. What's have... your favorite YouTube channel? Yeah. Uh, young person. It's hard for me to like pin. <laughs> Dude, so young. these yeah. are these are the hard uh -huh. questions. I'm, I'm, these are hard questions. One hundred percent. For movies, I'm like, um, well, I could tell you my favorite book because I don't read many books. Fine. And, Fine. And I read this one book, and I actually liked it, and I wanted to finish it, and I did finish it. It was The Martian. In okay. High school. Oh, yeah. Is that like a, a a fictional situation? Yeah. Okay. I'd say it's pretty fictional. What was that book about? About a dude that went to Mars. Okay. And he. Uh, they make it into a movie. He had to survive. Yeah, The Martian. It's uh, who's the main? Oh my God! Is Matt, Matt Damon? Matt Damon. Okay. No. Wait. No. Wait. No. 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 Not Matt Damon. Yo, pull um, that up, Jamie. Potato guy. That's what. <laughs> yeah, potato guy. He's the what? What is it called? <laughs> He's like the, the the greatest. Started planting things on Mars and growing I'm potatoes. I'm the first farmer on Mars. Oh no, dude, it's totally Matt Damon. Is it Matt Damon? Yeah. Oh wait, yeah, he you're knows. right. You're he right. knows. Yeah. Yeah, that's totally Matt Damon. Yeah, Matt Damon. But uh. That movie. That book was. The movie's pretty good too. I wouldn't say it's like top tier movie, but. Okay. Uh, no, it's a it's a okay. top tier movie, but great book. That was like the one book that I read where I was like, I'm actually liking this. I'm going to keep reading. And okay. I wasn't. Normally, I'll try and force myself to read books, and then my mind goes, blah, blah, blah. and then I, you know, I quit after like a couple chapters. But in terms of movies, though, I'm I have a very broad, I, I you know, I, I just I will sit down, and if a movie's on and I get hooked, I, I watch the whole thing. Okay. Yeah. What's your favorite thing to do? Learn. Okay. I guess. I don't know. I don't really have dude. Don't be a nerd. Like right, don't right be a now, nerd, dude. Like right now, right now, my favorite thing's been jujitsu. Okay. And then sometimes it's surfing. Sometimes it's yeah. You're, I like working out. Keeps me. That's awesome. Keeps me good. Like neutral. Keeps me cool. Um, yeah, and then hang out with cool people. That's probably my favorite thing to do. Dude, I think you got it all figured out, Ethan. What's the secret? That I don't. <laughs> Dude, that's pretty good, man. Make it till you make it. Man. Hell yeah! All right, man. That's about all I got, man. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? Anything? You want to ask me anything? Um, Yo, Ethan, podcast me real quick. I'll podcast you. Yo, do a podcast what? to me. Or what, what took you? I got a question. Oh, what, what, what took you to California from Jersey? Oh, Ooh. thank you. Good question. My wife, oh, Nicole. Um, so I met my wife traveling when I was. Young in twenty, oh my god, holy! Sh She's listening. Yeah, no, for <laughs> sure, man. Oh, don't be careful, <laughs> dude. That was so long ago, man. Two thousand two. That's when I met her. Two thousand two. She was from California. 
I was not from California. I was from Bricktown, New Jersey. And um, we like did this like long distance like dating thing. This is like we were like chatting on AOL. Like that's how long ago it was. Like, <laughs> dude, yeah, it was like we were using fax machines and, and whatnot. Uh, <laughs> dude, totally, dude. Um, Realtors are the only people with fax machines anymore. <laughs> so we, uh, yeah, man. So we were we we kind of dated long distance, and we'd fly back and forth, and it was super fun. And I moved to Ocean Grove, and I was Asbury was like turning around, and I was like D- DJing at the Asbury Lanes, bef- like the old Asbury Lanes, and like yeah, 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 yeah. totally. I was like, uh, I met her. I was touring with bands. I was like, I toured with like punk and hardcore bands, and so that's what I did when I was younger. And we met, and um, yeah, man, I uh, I owned a music marketing company, and so we um, we decided that we were in love and we wanted to be together. And so she came to live with me, um, in uh, in Neptune, New Jersey. I bought a house in Neptune, and she came to live with me in Neptune for a summer. She spent a summer at the Jersey Shore. Yeah, right, dude. Right, good. She's make sure she, she at least got hooked. one summer in. Her. <clears throat> dude, we're riding bikes. All it, around. Ta- all it takes is one summer, dude. Yeah, so, <laughs> dude. I heard a saying, if. If you survive a New Jersey winter, God won't kill you in the summer. <laughs> yeah. Is that a saying? Because, like, God damn, I had a hard winter. <laughs> yeah, man. So, like, but, like, uh, so, yeah. my and Yeah. Then, dude, we li- she lived here for 10 years. And so she's from Dana Point, California. She lived here for 10 years. And then we had our son, our first son, Milo. Uh, he was three. And she was like, hey, our goal was to move to California. Like, she wanted to move to California. But I owned a house. Real estate was really like the golden handcuffs. Real estate was doing really well for me. Um, And it was really hard. Like I was on this upward trajectory of real estate, man. And I I just didn't, I couldn't leave. And so, or I, I guess not that I couldn't, but it was just really hard to leave. And then eventually we just made the decision to, I got an opportunity. It's funny, man. I always wanted to be in California. I always wanted to be there. And there's that, there's this thing where like you start moving your feet, like you might not get directly your destination, but if you just start moving your feet, you'll get to where you're supposed to be. Not where you want to be, where you're supposed to be, I think, you know? And I got an opportunity in, um, working with Keller Williams in like the, in Maryland, DC. And so I moved down to Baltimore. I didn't know that. Yeah, I moved down to Baltimore to take over a market center for Ooh. Keller Williams and to recruit. Yeah, I'm from the Jersey Shore. She's from Dana Point, California. It's arguably one of the most beautiful spots in the country, right? And so uh, and then we moved to Baltimore. We were in like an, dude, we were in an Airbnb. So I took it on this role that was going to be like a long play, like three to five years, right? To help build something for Keller Williams in, in Maryland. And um, we were in an Airbnb for like two months. Uh, I bought a house. I bought like a row home. We were under contract to buy one of those like row homes in Baltimore. And dude, the first day, my, I was there a month before my wife, right? And then she came down and we rented out our house. We had a house in Ocean Township. We still own it. We rented it out. And dude, the first, dude, the, so we were in Baltimore. We were in like a nice neighborhood in Baltimore, but it's still Baltimore. <laughs> and I didn't know, man. I'm like, Dude, how we were talking about saying yes and trying new things. That's me too, dude. I was like, all right, yeah, let's do this. And bro, I was such a Keller Williams freak, man. Like I was like, they talk about like drinking the Kool-Aid at KW. Like I was like- You drank the Kool-Aid. Oh, I was like making the Kool-Aid, bro. (laughs) I was serving it, you know? Like, and so I wanted to do all the, I wanted to do every job at KW. And so I took this team leader job and, and anyway, um, dude, the first day my wife was in Baltimore, our car got broken into and then, like, the next week, a kid got shot the next block. We were in Canton, I believe. We were in, like, a nice part of Baltimore. And we were just like, dude, one woman, like, a woman had, like, a breast pump. Like, it looks like a purse. And she told my wife, like, at the at the playground. The playground's, like, any cage, by the way. It's, like, fenced in. And she, like, tells my wife, like, oh, I almost got robbed for my breast pump because someone thought it was. My wife's, like, and so one day my wife is, like, hey. And I had kind of, I was in my first 90 days in this role, and I believe in the first 90 days, it's dating. You know, I think if you, like, you can just kind of say no, I think. You know, like, you can say no at any time, but yeah. I just, yeah, I just decided it wasn't. My wife called me crying, and she's like, hey, can I talk to you? It was, like, in the middle of the day, and I went and met her at the park. And she had the stroller with our with our, our son in, in the stroller, and she said, you know, I don't, I don't like it here. And I was like, Shit. I don't like it here either, <laughs> you know? Like... <laughs> And I spent the next day, like I, you know, there's this thing where it's like, you want to, you want to, you want to, you want to have integrity. You want to do what you say you're going to do. And I want to follow through with things. 
But this was something that just, I don't think it was for me. It just wasn't a fit. And the whole universe was telling me it wasn't a fit. And I walked around Baltimore the next day. And I, we're talking about like leaning on people and talking to people and asking for help. Like I called like the three people that I trusted the most in my life. And I was like, hey, what do I do here? And everyone's like, get out of there. And so all of our stuff was in a pod because we were under contract to buy a house. And um, all of our stuff was out of the other house. So we just shipped the pod to California. So like my move to California was not strategic. It was hard. It was like yeah. not calculated at all. That was, was not the plan. Of, it was the universe telling you you got to get the fuck out of Baltimore. Yeah, hundred percent, man. So then you got the fuck out of Baltimore <clears throat> went to California. <laughs> got out of there, dude. Like I don't. I am not a. I try not to be a hater, but there. I don't like anything about Baltimore, man. And so we. Um, well, that that that's not a very pleasant place. That's not true. The crab cakes were the shit, man. The crab <laughs> cakes were the shit. Yeah. And I went to a... Uh, uh, I haven't had their crab no. cake, so I can't talk. Dude, there's a dude that there's... A... It's like this big. It's a giant mound of crab cake for like 16 oh. bucks. You, oh, my God. It's yeah. Fresh maybe fun. maybe dude, maybe that's the food idea. Bro, I'll tell you right now. Life. Baltimore, dude, there's a, a dude named Patrick Martin I know down here who's fucking awesome. Going to a game at Camden Yards is fucking awesome. And, uh, oh, there's also... There was a drink called an Orange Crush. It's like orange juice and like... It was... It was like it's an alcoholic drink. It was awesome. It's like a Baltimore thing. That was cool. But we just shipped the pod to California. My wife's sister had like a big old house that we would always stay at, like when we go there for holidays. So there was a room for me and my wife. There was a room for my son. We just crashed, man, and we just made a really quick decision. And um, and then how did you? Well, so you said you had like the golden handcuffs to Jersey. So then how did you transition from leaving that to go to Baltimore to work the management job? But then how did you operate? once you just left to California. So I... Is that when you started working with Gil? When I went to Baltimore, there was another Keller Williams agent that like, I asked to run, I hired to run Oz Group, right? To be the team leader. Yeah. That gentleman came on and he ran Oz Group, right? And so then I went, and that's when we were kind of like prospecting based, farming based, all that. And so that he took, he took that over and I would like, so he was running Oz Group. Oz Group was great. Profitable, running, radical. And then when I got to California, that was 2018. And that was probably the hardest year of my life because I didn't have a plan. And I just knew I wanted to, I just knew I wanted, dude, I just wanted, one of my biggest regrets in life is that I never lived anywhere else. You know, I went to college at Stockton, like down the street. You know what I mean? Like it's right down the road. It might as well be, you know, whatever. And I just wanted to experience something different and uh, I traveled like crazy, but I never experienced a different culture, different anything. And my wife really wanted to go back there. And that was important to her. And since that was important to her, that was important to me. And I just felt like my, everything was calling me to, to go there. And when I got there, it's funny, man. I was a, uh, you know, you know, I was a huge prospecting person, cancel, expires, cancel, withdraws. Yeah. I could hit the phones and I can set, I'll set an appointment right now if you want me to, right? Like we'll get on the phones, we'll set an appointment. When I got to Cal, when I got to Orange County, California, I was like, cool, I'll just do that. I'll just hit the phones. And everyone was like, it's a different market. You don't understand. It's different. It's different. It's different. And I think my ego got to California before I did. I was like, dude, I got there. I'm like, hey, guys, Joe's here. Um, give I'll me be all, in production in give no me all, time. Yeah, give me all the listings. <laughs> so it's such a competitive market there. There's So yeah. put in perspective, at the time, I think there was like 8,000 licensed realtors in, in our MLS in the Orange County MLS, there was 50,000 licensed realtors, right? So everyone's got their license, and it's a high, high price point. So the people that are good there are really good. Like, yeah. they're very good. And there, they're not, there isn't a lot of agents that are prospecting based. They're like marketing based. They spend a lot of marketing. Like, you ever watch I Love You Man with like the bus benches and like the billboards? Like, that's what, it, that's what it is. And so I got out there, and dude, I started prospecting, and like, I couldn't pronounce the street names. Right, like I'd be like via via de Paseo, like there's a town called Placenta or something, a Placentia. I called it Placenta, or whatever. I'm like, oh, I saw your house for sale, Placenta. And like, <laughs> I'm in this prospecting room, and the other agents are just like, dude, you're that's not horrible. right, horrible. Like you're just horrible. And I just and I just kept and the other th and so anyway, I I was just trying to figure it out. I was able to get like, uh, I'm super proud of this. I pulled about. My first year, I did six listings that were all expired, which I was super proud of, man, right? And so, and I was door knocking and doing all that stuff. And then I was, you know, starting my business brand, brand new. That's why I'm so passionate about helping agents, man, is because I've gone to a new market. I had sold over 500 houses at this point, and I went to a brand new market to start over. 
And it was brutal. Like I got stomped on, dude. Like I got worked. Like Milo. Got worked. Yeah. yeah, like Milo and Jiu-Jitsu, dude. I was getting worked. And like <laughs> I was going on a lot of listing appointments, losing them, right? Like, and then people were like, Where are you from? What's your history? How many houses have you sold? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, Well, I fucking sold a shit ton of houses in Nasbury Park, New Jersey, right? And they're like, and uh, but I just grinded it, man. I got um the first house I sold in Orange County was like a referral. It was like a five hundred thousand dollar condominium, right? The next house I sold was a five million dollar house. It was listed at seven million. We negotiate. We offered like four or five, and we negotiated it to like five million. That was a Facebook pay per click lead. No way. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I had probably gotten. <clears throat> I didn't know how to get. Bit. I was just trying. I was just prospecting and hitting the phones every day like an animal and. Dude, the Facebook, the pay per click leads, well, the, they're the, the worst the, leads. Yeah, the, 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 I understand they're not, they're not great. Dude, the, the average six, six years conversion time, right? Really? Yeah. And um, anyway, so I got this one dude, and he was like, "Yeah." And that guy bought that house, and um, it was also listed by Tim Smith, which is like one of the top realtors in the whole world. I'm like, dude, I just felt like I'm like, dude, I'm like, like I'm working with Tim Smith. Dude, well, this guy's he's it was it was him and he had a co listing agent on it, but they're like. Dude, when I walked in this house, this house is like 10,000 square feet, right? In Laguna Beach, right? And I'm like, dude, they knew I was a newbie, dude. They knew I was green. Dude, I think they could smell it, the way I look, the way I talk. They're like, dude, they're like, you're not from around here, are you? And um, I remember my client was like, oh, my client loved me because he was like a gritty dude. He built, he was self-made. He built his business. The first realtor we met, he's like, do you know, um, uh, it's a Lebanese guy, dude, right? He's like, do you know Joe Oz? <laughs> to the other realtor, right? Because at these luxury houses, the other realtor's there. Like, they need to be there to open up the house. Yeah. He's like, you know Joe Oz? You know Joe Oz? And every, he said that to every realtor we went to go see on the first day. <laughs> He's hyping you up. <laughs> yeah, and they're like, they're like, no. And they're super kind of like, they're like, no, we don't know him. No, we don't know. Uh, no, I don't know Joe. I'm sure he's great. And my client goes like this. He's like, this guy, Joe Oz, he called me every day for two months. I got to work with him. That's how he's talking. And I'm like, I took that as a compliment. And you're like, yeah, I did. So, dude, the first, in 2018, I was just trying to piece deals together, man. And um, by the way, he had a $2 million house he had to sell, too. So it wound up being like $7 million production off a of Facebook lead, right? And I probably had to call through about fucking 800 Facebook leads to find that guy, right? Um Oh, dude, I can keep going, man. I started a team. That's in incredible. I started I, a team in Los Angeles. Like, by the way, I couldn't even get to Los Angeles without a fucking like GPS. Like, I didn't know anything about it. Right? I was just like, I'm gonna have a team in Los Angeles. I'm gonna have a team in Orange County. And it was one of those things where it was like, and then New Jersey started to like, there's leading indicators of it like not doing awesome, you know. And I was like, I was like, dude, I'm not doing anything. I'm doing some things good. I'm doing some things not very good. I'm not doing anything like really well. And that's when I was like, that saying, like, you chase two rabbits, you catch zero. I was like, I need to concentrate on one thing. Like, I just need to do one thing. And I remember a mentor of mine was like, because, dude, again, man, I just ask for help. I think it's one of my superpowers is I just ask for help. I'm like, dude, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Can I tell you what's going through my head and will you help me? And um, thank God I have people in my life that said yes and they helped me. And I was like, I said to a mentor of mine, I was like, dude, I'm like, what do I do? Do I like, do I have a real estate team in in Orange County or do I have a real estate team in New Jersey or do I do both or do I do one did the LA one dude I remember the, like I had two agents right away and they're like asking me questions about like how they're like what do we think about this house in Eagle Rock or I'm like what the fuck is Eagle Rock it's like a neighborhood in yeah. <laughs> Los Angeles it's like up it's like an upcoming neighborhood it's 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 already turned around but uh, yeah it's already coming up. I was doing all these things and it was like hey man you need to just, like you can be a realtor in Orange County you can run a team in Los Angeles you can run a team in New Jersey you can do anything you want to do really well but you should just pick one and I was like fuck you're right and I chose to at that same time was that 2019 when Gil came yeah, to you yeah so at the exact time because <clears throat> what I understand from the story between you and Gil is that Gil was looking to buy investment properties and noticed that you had, I guess he ended, ended up calling you. Yeah, so Ga the the dude that was running, the gentleman that was running Oz Group when I went to Baltimore, and he was still running it when I went to California. I don't know how he stuck around. He's like, wait a minute, you're going to Baltimore, now you're going to California? Like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. I must have seemed like an insane person. But he was like, uh, he was running the team. Yeah, he was running the team. Oh, and he was like, yo. And I was like, 
I was looking for a sales manager, right? I was looking for a sales manager. And I told my team leader, I was like, hey, dude, I'm like, dude, whoever you meet that's smart, like, I gotta, I just, when you're looking for a leader, you're looking for someone, you just wanna have as many conversations as possible. Same thing with real estate, right? And I'm like, whoever you talk to that's smart or talented or whatever, just please introduce me to him. And then um, his name was Gary. Gary was like, hey, man, I gotta, I'm gonna introduce you to um, this guy named Gil. Who we, so Gary and I, Gary's a big investor guy, right? Built wealth through real, real, real smart guy. I was lucky enough to partner with him. He brought me in as his partner in 2015, 16, 17. We were buying houses in Neptune. Dude, back then you could buy a four, like foreclosures would go on the market, like foreclosed homes. You could buy a house in Neptune for like 130 grand. You could put 50 grand into it and then you could sell it for like 230, 240, 250. That's what we were doing, right? We weren't making like, we weren't, cr dude, in retrospect, we should have kept all those houses, right? But we would like flip them and we'd make like 20, 30 grand and we'd split it and like, you know, whatever. We kept a few of them, thank God, because they all tripled in value, right, since then. But um, but at that point, because we were doing those flips, Gil, because he's super smart, he went on the MLS and he was looking for houses that were like on the market and then back on the market and then looking who the listing agents were. Does that make sense? Like, or And so he could find who the investors were. And so he can go talk to investors so he can learn about flipping houses. And then that's how I met him. I did a... I did a seminar or I did something and Gil came to it. It's like the event. We're doing an event tonight. We're doing the Power Moms panel today and then we're doing a happy hour afterwards. We did an event like that and Gil came to the event and then he went to the happy hour and at the happy hour he just came up to me and started talking to me and then I asked him for coffee. And then I had coffee with him and I was like, this is one of the smartest dudes I've ever met. I'm like, and Dude, then I, I, I didn't I'll, know what we'll he was going to sit down for 15 minutes and he go like, we go for an hour and a half. Oh yeah. Oh, what, you and Gil. Yeah. Yeah. Well, dude, I was talking to him and I'm like, fuck, like I was looking for a sales manager. I'm like, dude, this guy the thing about Gil is he's a robot and he could do, he like can do anything he, he What's wants to do. Yeah. Like literally he can, like he can just become that thing. If there's a system, he can follow it. And then he, um, He's kind of like he'll describe himself as like robot with like Asperger's, right? So like sales is like he's not the best salesperson. But I remember being like, but fuck, you took 50 listings in the first year we were together, which is insane. Anyway, I was like, dude, I gotta figure out a way to get in business with this guy. And then we got into business together. And then Gil sees all the things that I don't see. And I'm very grateful for his friendship and his partnership and and whatever. I just give that dude whatever he wanted. And he's just been like a really great really great business partner, man. He's not a realtor. He's not in sales. He understands that real estate, Gil's big attraction, this whole thing is he's like, he knows that real estate is prime for disruption. And there's going to be a massive disruption in real estate and he wants to be a part of it. And that's what he's doing. That's what we're doing. Yeah. I agree with that. I think there's going to be a lot of disruption in a lot of fields the next couple of years. It's going to be exciting. Totally. Hey, I'm supposed to, there's someone else coming here. Is there? I think so. I did have one more question. I don't know if we have time. I think we do. Um, yeah, it's 10 10. I mean, you guys have to love it. <clears throat> That's cool. Um, hold on one second. Let me text Lauren real quick. Are they having trouble finding the, the Yeah, we're on the spot. Secret third floor. Yeah. Because you look inside and you just see. I just assumed. I was like, oh, it's probably in 3 0 something. Hey, it's I'm here with Ethan floor. and no one else has showed up. Not sure if they have trouble finding the place. Let me know. I'm looking at my phone now. Oh. Oh, there we go. Hello. <coughs> Perfect. I didn't want to intrude. I'm like, I don't know if it's a one-on-one thing. All right, we got to get you in here because uh, we have this till what, 11? Yeah. All right, cool. Do you want to ask that last question? Yeah. I guess for me, because we were talking about your, your relationship with Gil. Yeah. And finding that business partner. I guess if you were to put yourself in my shoes, it's like, what, what would you, what should I look for in terms of like, when that person shows up where it's like you're the person that I could do work with. Oh, that's a good question. So you're looking for like when you find a, come across like a talented person. Exactly. And what was your question? What questions should I ask? Is that what you said? No, I guess what, what would you look for? Or I guess what do you pay attention to? Or what what's kind of like the key indicator of like, you know, this is someone I could trust and work with and we could do some, build something together. It's a really good question, man. Um, when I was recruiting at when I was recruiting at Keller Williams, there was a process called career visioning. We might have done it with you. Do you remember filling one, out like one, three, a five? What's that? One three five. No, no, no. So basically, it's there's a process where 
The answer really is this. It's like going deep with someone, right? It's like dating before getting married, like mm-hmm. getting in a relationship. So with Gil, I met him for coffee and I asked him a lot of questions, right? STFU, like shut up. It's not about you. Like ask, like do that. Oh, it's a lot of asking a lot of really good questions. And when you're interested in when someone is, is, is when you find someone that you're interested in working with, what I want to do is with well, the career visioning process, the reason why I bring that up is super, super valuable because when you do the career visioning process, a big part of that is like a past history. And so what you do is you talk to someone you're like, Hey man, I'm going to, I would like to do, I would like to talk about your past history with you. I'd like to go through your, your entire life, starting from when you graduated high school, all the things that you've done, all the major events in your life. What did you earn? What did you learn? What did you like? What didn't you like? Let's get started right now. And if you can go, do people go through a lot of stuff, man. And through this process, you really learn about someone, right? They'll say like, my dad died or this happened or we had a kid or I got arrested or whatever, man. And it'll be like, cool, what happened? What did you learn? What did you earn? And so you go through that process to kind of get to know someone and dude, checking references is like really important, right? Finding like finding out who, when someone comes from somewhere else, you want to talk to the people that they were in business with. Does that make sense, right? Like, hey, I saw you're in business with Bob. What was that like? But I think that's a really good question. Um, you have to clearly define what you're looking for, right? Like, what's the objective? Like, who? Like, I was looking for a sales manager when Gil came along. I was like, dude, this guy's super talented. Also, you you should know what you do well and what you don't do well, and you want someone to supplement the things that you're not doing well. And the things that you don't do well, it's not like you don't do them well, but you probably don't want to do those things. Prospect. <laughs> yeah, totally. Not that I don't do it well. I do it right. well. But I don't like doing it. Yeah, so you need to hire someone.